Went to jail. All praises that you ain't go. All praises, cause how old are you? Twenty nine. Have you been to jail before? Just one time. You never been to prison. Okay, cool. Because right now, what they're trying to set up is that they're trying to jam our young brothers into a place where if you get caught up, no matter how many times you get, it used to be if you get caught with a felony three times, you you going up the road. Forget about it. But now they're making it so that when you get caught as a young man, they're trying to jam you up, put like football numbers on you if they get a chance to put those kind of felonies on you. You understand? But here's the thing, though. You have to know how to avoid those traps when they arise so that you yourself don't fall into it and fall victim to the system. The only way you're really going to be able to do that is if you are literally putting your mind and your focus on keeping God's commandments. Right. Is that it that you read? No, sir. In their affliction, uh -huh. they will seek me early. And look, and all praises to the Most High you hear today doing just that. Give me Isaiah 26 and verse 2, or verse 3, I think it is. Verse 3. Verse 3. Come on. Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 3. Thou would keep him in perfect peace, uh -huh. whose mind is stayed on thee. Because he trusted in thee. So the peace that we're looking for to avoid the jail cell, to avoid getting shot down in the street, getting caught up in any kind of way, that peace is only going to come from keeping God's commandments, keeping our focus and our mind trained on the word of God so that we understand, okay, I see the traps coming. I'm going to sidestep that thing because I know, I know exactly what it's going to do to me. You got kids? What it's going to do to my family. Because whatever you do, whatever affects you is going to affect them as well. So you got to be able to teach them and teach them. Give me that uh, and live a kiss about the, uh, the tattoos. Give me that. So that you understand, okay, this is what I'm going to teach my son, my daughter. This is how I'm going to guide my house and teach my wife how to teach my children. So that whenever any of these snares try to come up and try to take us as a family or as an individual, we know how to fight it. We know what to do and where to go in order to combat those things that are trying to destroy us. All right? That's why we out here. As a, that's literally why we're out here. We're trying to at least wake up one brother, one sister, to wake up to the truth about who they are so that they can avoid the traps and the destruction that's coming to this place. Right. Come on. Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 28. Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. So this is, again, what we were talking about, Brother Daniel, who was here a little bit earlier. What distinguishes you and makes you above all nations on the face of the earth? The commandments. Right. Because all the other nations, they're cutting up their... This in a time of uh, when we were in the wilderness, the so-called Africans, that's who, they, that's who we were trying to get out of the land, and that's who we were trying to uh, take the land back from, so-called Canaanites, right? They are the Africans today. If you look up some of their rituals, some of their rituals are to cut their flesh. And they put, have you ever seen Warmonger? Killmonger, that's his name, right? Killmonger? Those are, those are African hermetic customs. All right, that they mark up their flesh, they put the cuttings in their flesh that the scripture says, or if they make tattoos. You see some of the uh, the, the Celtics or what they what today would be called Irish. They mark up their skins with the tattoos and so on and so forth. The Hawaiians, they got those big arm tattoos and so on and so forth. Those are other nations. Those aren't our people. So God says to distinguish and put ourselves above all nations. We gotta do what? Leviticus chapter nineteen and verse twenty-eight. Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. So in order for us to make the next step 
to where we got to be as a people, we have to make that first step to keeping God's commandments. So as you got all those, those tattoos now, now you understand, okay, well, the Most High says, in my affliction, I will seek him early. So along with that, if I want the peace that comes from the Most High, I'm going to do what he says. So I ain't going to get no more tattoos. I know I lost my, my brother, my aunt. I ain't going to put the tattoos of their face or they, 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 the, the year that they was living. I ain't going to do that no more. Because God says, that's how I distinguish myself from all the other nations on the earth. That's how I do it. Give me, uh, give me the Sabbath day. You working today? Or you just chilling today? Ah, okay. Okay, all praises. Hey, hey but listen, you around family right now. And we're going we gonna to give you, give me that, um, Luke 418. Give me that. The book, the book of Luke, chapter 4 and verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he have anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. That's the good news is the gospel. That's why I asked you, what good news have you heard today? The good news is you are an Israelite. The salvation that's promised to Israel belongs to you. Repentance belongs to you. Salvation belongs to you. That's the good news. Read. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he have anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives. And that's us. That's literally us. Who, he's, who has he anointed? You. Who has he anointed? You. All these brothers up here is who, who he has anointed to go out and teach their people to lift them out of their dead state. To lift them out of, bottom, out of the bottom of society. To tell them something they've never heard before. You are the greatest people to ever walk the face of the earth. You so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you are the Israelites according to the Bible. You are God's people. You belong to the Most High God. But the only way to turn back to being that what God made you to be is by keeping his commandments. You know how far we've fallen as a people? We used to be kings to the point where we're, wherever we go, we would be feared. The Bible says the fear and the dread of you shall come upon the other nations. We go anywhere right now. Well, then. And they don't have a problem with killing you because for a very long time, we've been here in America, we've been taught to be below animals. That means you could be killed and it would be worth less me killing you than to kill a cow or my dog. I kill my dog, I'm, I'm going to be crying more than if I kill my brothers. God says that if we understand who we are and we start keeping his commandments, the way we deal with each other, the way how we deal with ourselves, our wives, our children, everything would change so that when we see things like epidemics like black on black crime, we see epidemics like high rates of STDs, high rates of abortions, in our communities, it would end. It would be completely obliterated if we keep his commandments. Think about it. You've been to church? Growing up in the church, right? Born and raised in the church. And that's a lot of us. No matter where you go. I don't care if you come from Puerto Rico. You come from Guatemala. You come from right down the street. Sis Chuck, uh, uh, Homestead. It don't matter. We all grew up in the church. Somebody was forcing us, wake your behind up. Never. Although we've been to these churches, raised in the church, we've never been taught what to do according to God's word. Right. Ever. Now, that's why I say we've all been anointed. Even you two brothers, we've been anointed to teach this to our people, to bring them out of that state, to turn this world upside down. That's right. That's, right. That's what God has put upon you. The only reason why you're standing here today is for that reason. Y'all could have walked on, y'all could have heard it, got the fly, all right, cool, all right, cool. Because our people do that. Hey, hey, that's, that, hey, that's heavy right there. Hey, y'all keep doing what y'all doing, man. Y'all keep doing the good work. And they keep on moving. But God says, nah, listen, in your affliction, that's when you're going to be like, why is this happening? Why are we going through this like this? Why is it like, okay, I go week to week, you know, I, I try to make a couple extra hours so I could 
pay these bills so I can save up a little bit of dollars so I can maybe move to a better neighborhood or get a better car or, you know, do something with the kids, do something with the wife. But then as soon as the money come, the money go. Give me that Haggai. Haggai 1 and 6. The Bible says all of that. The Bible says those things will happen to our people because we're not keeping his commandments. So where it says consider your ways. Haggai chapter 1 and verse 5. Now, therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your way. So that's the first thing God says. Yeah, think about what you're doing. Think about what you're doing. Think about how you're living. You're saying, okay, this is, this is, this is hell, man. I'm going through hell right now. First thing God says, think about what you're doing. What are you doing? Come on. Ye have sown much and bring in little. You work all these hours. You work two, three jobs. You got the side hustle going on. And you still bringing what? Ye have sown much and bring in little. But you still bringing a little? You barely are able to pay one or two bills. After the second bill, damn. Looks like I'm about to go back to that payday loan again. <laughs> damn, can't wait for tax time to come around. Come on. And bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. You eat, even though you eat, but it's like, damn, I'm still hungry. You feed them, you know how them kids get. Them kids that eat you out of house and home. You feed them a full meal, and 30 minutes later, uh, daddy, I'm hungry. What? what? You had more food than me. How you hungry again? Come on. Ye drink, but ye are not full, filled with drink. Ye clothe you. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. When it says you clothe, but there's none warm, that means although the, the the honest, to be very honest with you, we do live in a cold world. We do live in a cold world. So although you clothe yourself with the Gucci, you may clothe yourself with the H and M and all of that, all those nice fabrics and stuff. You still cold. You have no love for yourself, no love for your people, no love for your children, no love for your wife. That clothing is the laws. It's God's commandments. Read on. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put into a bag with hole. You know what a bag of hole? You got, a, you got a book, your book bag, right? You ever put like cut big holes in the bottom of your book bag? And you try to put a whole bunch of pennies and, and nickels in there. What happens? It goes in one side and comes right out the other. Read that part again. Ye but you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put into a bag with holes. So we earn wages, and it goes right back to the bill collectors. Right. It goes right back out of our hands. You, you have, there's, a, there's a picture that has like little wings on a dollar bill. And you get it, and it's flying away already. Read verse 5 one more time. Verse five, Haggai chapter 1 and verse 5. Now, therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your way. That's why God says you got to consider your ways. Why are we going through it? Why we can't make ends meet? Because we are not considering what we are doing. Right. We ourselves have to be keeping God's commandments. That way, when we want to be blessed, and we're looking to be blessed and get better things in our lives to do for our families, to do for our people, he'll bless it. But we ain't going to see it if we're doing our own Damn thing. Right. Now you will see the true men of God. We are not black men, we are Israelites. Take care of us. Take care of us. And the children too. And the children too. Around saying that I'm a black man, I ain't 
saying that no more. It's our fault, man. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.